Hi everybody, Adriana Otero here with Best Life Realty. Thanks so much for tuning in to another episode of Real Talk with Adriana. I have with me today Nate Nemersh with Illuminate Home Inspections. He is a, of course, a real... He is a local inspector in Morgan County area and we're going to give you guys a little bit of a chance to get to know Nate a little bit more and see if you potentially want to hire him as your home inspector in the future. So first off, thanks so much Nate for coming in and agreeing to talk to me. Yeah, good morning. So a couple of questions. So first question I have for you is how long have you been doing home inspections? Uh, I've been doing home inspections for a few years now. Um, I started off just doing home inspections for friends and uh, eventually ended up becoming certified through Internachi and um, I've just taken off and actually doing it professionally. Okay, awesome. So uh, what past experience have you had that you think has helped you in your home inspection process? Um, the past experiences that I've had uh, that's helped me with that is uh, I started working for my dad as a kid. He had his own HVAC company and I got familiar with the uh, construction industry. Ended up taking a class in high school. I did masonry arts school and um, learned a lot about masonry arts and carpentry. And after I graduated, I ended up working for a building restoration company and we mainly focused on building restoration projects on old buildings in Denver. Mm -hmm. And we also built a lot of memorials um, throughout the Denver metropolitan area. Um, and so I got experience in that aspect of construction and mm -hmm. then doing a lot of projects myself um, around my house, built a lot of my own um, kitchens and mm -hmm. bathrooms and just remodeled our own properties. And I've also flipped a few homes, so that's where I got a lot of experience. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So definitely a lot of experience seeing the inside, outside, you know, all the, sure you've probably had your share of big problems that you've encountered when you're doing your flips and, and you such. You always come across something that is very important to address, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to home and properties because you want to make sure that it's done properly so you don't have to come back and redo it or have someone else deal with that problem down the road. So yeah, it's very important to uh, address all those issues. Definitely. Which leads to my next question. Um, what type of philosophy do you have going into inspections? Well, the way that uh, everything has evolved now with uh, not only the materials that are used for home building, but the actual practice of building these homes, mm -hmm. a lot of things have changed. So I just try to keep updated with uh, the way that um, these materials are used and if they're being used properly. Uh, I try to make sure that um, a lot of the new codes that are being implemented as the years go on, that these uh, practices are being taken by the uh, skilled laborers or contractors that are actually hired to build these homes. And really my philosophy is just to keep updated on all these advancements because it seems like every year there's something new that's coming out that just mm -hmm. makes it a little bit easier for uh, companies to build these homes or large buildings so mm -hmm. yeah I just try to keep updated with the times which is very true because I feel like just about every other year there's like a new new building code requirements or new electrical code changes and stuff like that so I mean it's definitely good that you're you're keeping up with that so you can make sure that you're telling people what the most recent code is and you know keeping keeping an eye out for some potential downfalls I guess in the future yep Absolutely, and it's you have to stay informed Definitely. because there's a, there's always these engineers that come out with the latest and greatest mm -hmm. technology to implement into these structures. Mm -hmm. So in some homes you'll come across something that may have passed a few years back, but now it's a completely different code, but that home is still grandfathered in mm -hmm. with those initial codes. Uh, for instance, with these older homes out here in Fort Morgan, you have homes that were built in the early 1900s. Well, they used quality building materials mm -hmm. and they also had other materials that mm -hmm. now don't meet today's standard, right. like knob and tube wiring, mm -hmm. or you get into the mid-century, they started using aluminum wiring. Mm -hmm. And you know nowadays we use copper wiring and Romax. And uh, same thing with plumbing, it went from, 
cast iron to now we're using PVC and ABS mm -hmm. and then with the supply lines it went from copper to now we're using PEX tubing. Right. So we're implementing all these new products mm -hmm. because people keep updating these standards right. for today's building techniques. Very true. Mm -hmm. So next question, if you could give both buyers and sellers some advice about home inspections, what would you tell them? Well, I would say first of all, you want to make sure that you hire a qualified inspector. You want to have someone that's certified and knows what they're doing and knows what they're looking at. Uh, secondly, you want to make sure that you have sewer scopes done and any kind of other testing depending on the demographic area. You may want to have radon testing, you may want to have uh, mold testing, you know, and, and check for any kind of fungi. Um, you want to have a very thorough inspector or company come out and do that inspection to make sure that they're not missing anything for the largest investment that you're making in your life. Definitely good yeah. advice. I know there's, especially out here, sometimes you run into, you know, tree roots with the, you know, a lot of our, our houses that have big trees. You run into potential tree roots, or like you said, with, you know, growing practices, you know, maybe it was a really old sewer and it hasn't been updated and still has the cast iron and it's cracked or something, which you wouldn't find out if you don't do a sewer scope. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to rural area, mm -hmm. you have septic systems that you have to think of. And a lot of people don't uh, practice the proper uh, standard to keep that ecosystem in balance. Mm -hmm. And so if they're using chemicals and it's going down their sink or going down their toilet, the ecosystem is damaged and now it can't do its job to break down your materials. And so you end up getting systems that now are no longer functional mm -hmm. and they have to be pumped out several times a year. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people that buy rural properties don't realize that and the leach fields need to be ripped up and replaced because those organisms were actually killed off because of the chemicals that were put into your septic tank. Which that's something I didn't know. Yeah. So it's very important to make sure that you have records of mm -hmm. how, how often those septic tanks are cleaned out in rural areas, uh, you know, what was their general practice to make sure that they were sustaining the balance of that ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And there's things that you can buy too to basically feed that ecosystem to boost its okay. uh, efficiency. Okay. Mm -hmm. So as far as sellers, um, I know a lot of times sellers, you know, they're on the edge of their feet when they hear the word inspection. What would you tell them? Well, as a seller, I think a lot of sellers become very worried when an inspector is coming out mm -hmm. because of something they may have done and mm -hmm. they're not a professional. And so as a handyman, they don't know the codes. Right. And so they're in fear that you're going to come across something that wasn't properly done. Mm -hmm. But in all reality, I'm there to make sure that the buyers are aware of any kind of situation with that property mm -hmm. and how it can be professionally addressed or it can even be fixed by themselves or a handyman. And so I think the fear of an inspector coming in as a buyer, I don't think they should have such concerns because really we're just bringing everything into the light to say, hey, this is something that needs to be addressed before it becomes a really serious issue. So I would, I would say that if buyers are having uh, an inspection done, it's also good for maybe the seller to maybe have an inspector come out to give them a heads up with, hey, look, this is what problems you may have with the property mm -hmm. that you may want to address before you list your house on the market. So when another buyer comes in and wants to purchase this home, that inspector that was hired for those buyers is not going to discover those issues because they've been addressed beforehand. And so it's actually a tool for both parties. So I just would say it's, it's important for both parties to, again, have a certified professional inspector that knows what they're looking at come out and evaluate the property and what kind of concerns they may discover in that inspection.
Okay, so now a couple of fun questions. Um, what is your favorite movie and why? That's kind of a trick question. I mean, what <laughs> era are we going to talk about here? If it's a movie that you could watch endlessly, which one would it be? Um, you know, I would say a movie that I could probably watch over and over would be Tombstone. Um, oh, really? Yeah. The, the adventureness of it? I just, the whole idea of how close we really are to the frontier days that wasn't that long ago mm -hmm. and how much we've advanced <coughs> since that era and i mean personally i live in a house that was built in the early 1900s so it's it's cool for me to see okay. the morale and everything of how those homes were built and okay. the, what it really took the horsepower mm -hmm. and the manpower to build these towns back then yeah. and knowing that you had a lot of outlaws that were coming in and trying to run things that's probably one of my favorite movies and i have a few that fit that same niche okay so that quentin that tarantino area. is probably one of my favorite directors okay and he recently came out with the movie the hateful eight okay uh, that's another great mm -hmm. western and it actually has kurt russell in it as well <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I like westerns. I like a little bit of everything, but westerns. Probably your favorite? Yeah. Okay. So, um, who is the person that inspires you the most, the person that you most look up to? Uh, I, I, I look up to my dad. Uh, he's been my crystal ball my whole life. He's always told me that, uh, he's already done what I'm about to do. So I've always taken his advice and, uh, ran with it because he actually is very experienced and he he knows a lot and then uh, I learned a lot from my grandfathers as well very cool mm -hmm. well that is all the questions that I have for you today um, so thank you very much for again agreeing to come on the show and sharing some of your expertise and some of your your knowledge and telling us a little bit about you absolutely so thanks for having me today thank you all right you're welcome